so I can set, set this guy up here. The volume's okay? You guys? Yeah, volume's fine. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm recording already just to so the once the class starts, but I'm fooling around with all my wires here. So you could uh, move forward from this if you're watching it outside of class time. All right. Where is okay. So this little gadget that I bought to hold the iPhone, um, I got an email from the person who sold it to me, the maker of it. And she says, her and her friend got together and they designed this thing and they really want a review from me. And I thought that was kind of cool that they made this. It's not it's like some company from overseas or something, no you know? Where'd yeah. you go? Saw off Amazon? Yeah, I got it off of Amazon. Huh. Okay, I'm ready. Hey, Edgar. Hey, Joanne. Good morning. How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing? Good, good. Is Colin uh, with us yet? Yeah, I am. Oh, okay, good great. How are you, Colin? Uh, pretty stressed. Yeah. What are you taking? Um, physics 4D, uh, Chem 12, I think, whatever OCHEM is. Are, are, you, a, and are, you, a chem, are you a chemo engineering major? Maybe. Maybe. I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, experimenting with Chem 12. <laughs> yeah. So you're taking Chem 12 and you're taking... Uh, physics 4D, which I understand is, I mean, it's so abstract. And then, uh, and then you said psychology? Yeah. Well, that's probably not that bad. But yeah, no. those other two classes. Is Jace, Jason's teaching 12 or is it Zaruba? Uh, it's Zaruba. Okay. Yeah, just go get tutoring, go to teacher's office hours, you know, everybody's here to help. Um, but yeah, it is a lot of load. You're taking three demanding classes right now. Yeah. So if you want to come and see me during office hours, we could talk about more about your major and such because Colin, this is the first time I have you. So most of the students in this class have already met with me and talked about which major they want to go into. And so let's, let's have a talk. Okay. Okay. Any day one to two. All right. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Gerardo. Hey, good Amani, morning. Luis. Morning. Hello. Luis, how are your kids? Hey, David. Hey, Bon. Okay, you guys, I'm going to get started. Okay, so um, topic for today is what? Tension. No. Friction. Friction. Yes, friction. Uh-oh, I haven't found my little list of all your names. Where the hell is it? You just call on Amani repeatedly for the whole day. That'll work. The whole time. The whole time, <laughs> Amani, you're going to be on. All right. Just kidding. Damn it. I thought I was all prepared. What did I miss? Oh, geez, there's a lot of uh chaos already what was that Dave? class seems chaotic already <laughs> shut up it's november 3rd K 
Okay, it wasn't supposed to be chaotic. I got all online. You'll, I'm all ready. The only thing is I can't find the list of your names. So anyway, let's get started. So today's class and Thursday's class already. Uh, you growing a mustache, Dave? Or no, you it was see? a Halloween costume. It was a Halloween uh, costume. Okay. And I honestly forgot about it until just now. Okay. And now it's November. It's great. Yeah, it's supporting men's health or something, right? Is that what yeah, yeah, that's right. About? Great. Okay. All right. So um, today and Thursday are friction. So my plan is we're going to look at the three problems today and discuss them first, and then we're going to do them together. And then on Thursday, I'm going to give you a more complicated problem, and I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. But we'll see how far we get, because today is a quiz day. We may only get through solving a couple of problems. So... Um, and then, of course, at the end of class, we'll look at, uh, you know, the overview, how we always do, just to, like, summarize the process. But you know how to solve these problems already. You know, the only thing that we now have is one extra equation. Amani, what's the extra equation now we have? Friction. Friction equation. What is it? Uh... What do you mean, what is it? What's the equation? Give me the equation for the friction. Oh, the fri the, the constant for it? <laughs> the frictional force is equal to? It's equal, <laughs> hold on. The friction force is, <laughs> I'm not focused. I'm, okay, let's go it's to not a good day. <laughs> let's go to Angel. Hello, good morning. This is kind of a crazy day today, right? Election day? Yeah. Anyway, no okay, speed. Angel, what's the friction equation? It is um, normal force times the coefficient of friction. Right. So the frictional force is equal to, so whenever anybody's asking for an equation, you know you have to have an equal sign in it, right? So I want to hear the whole equation. It's the frictional force is equal to mu n. So which mu do you think we're using in the statics class, Angel? I think it's the uh, mu s. Yeah, wow, yes, we're using the static friction, the, the part that just gets it to move. And the key in these problems, so key things. One, we have another equation now. So um, Bon, boy, I'm doing so well with al uh, alphabetical order already. Bon, for a yeah. 2D problem, for a rigid body 2D problem, how many equations do I normally have? Um. Well, we would be able to solve for three. Three, because what are the equations I have for a 2D body? Sum in the X, sum in sum the Y. Sum of the forces in the X. Give me the complete sentence. Sum, <laughs> sum of the, the forces, forces the around the X. Sum of the forces about Y. And the sum equals of the Equals zero. Moment. It's equation. You got to give me an equal sign. Sum uh, of the forces in the Y equals zero. And? Some of the and some of the moment about the z axis equals zero. Equals zero. So a regularly two D problem for rigid bodies, we have three equations, and now that we're introducing friction, we have a fourth equation. So now when we have four unknowns, we could solve it with one body. If we have five unknowns, we need two bodies. If we have eight unknowns, we need two bodies. Okay. So for every two D problem, we normally have three equations. But now that we're entering friction, we have four equations. When, I'm not going to be able to do this all in alphabetical order. So let's just go, um, okay, I, Isaac. Uh, when does a 2D body only have two equations? What kind of body, what kind of 2D body only Art has two? What? Concurrent forces. Say Concurrent it again. forces. Con when a there particle, are concurrent, concurrent forces, forces and we're only analyzing um, a particle. So when we, in a 2D problem, when we have a particle, there are only two equations. Some of the forces in the X equals zero, some of the forces in the Y equals zero. If it's a rigid body, we have three equations. Some of the forces in the X equals zero, some of the forces in the Y equals zero, some of the moments in the Z equals zero. When we have friction, we have four equations, okay? All right. And we're just doing two-dimensional problems in friction. So you really know how to solve these problems. We're just adding friction. The key thing, and of course, mu, we're only dealing with mu s. The key thing is you can 
only apply the frictional equation when it's about to move. It's about impending motion. So when we look at a friction problem, the first thing we really need to do is think about which way is this thing gonna move? And once we know which way the thing is gonna move, Dave, knowing the thing's gonna move, what do, what do we know then about the direction of the frictional force? Uh, it will be opposing it. So if it's trying to move this way, the friction pushes against it. Correct, okay? So again, we're talking about impending motion. And typically, Colin, is mu s typically greater than mu k? Or is it usually less? It's usually larger. It's usually larger because you need a greater force of external force to push it from being static. And then once it starts sliding, then you can put mu k in. But because this is a static course, we're only using mu s and realize that there has to be impending motion. If you have two blocks on top of each other and they're not gonna move relative to each other, the force is not equal to mu n between them. Let me say that again. And this is a, so our schedule today is of course we have our quiz at the end. We have three problems we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at the problems first and talk about how we're gonna set them up. Then we're gonna set them up and solve them as much as we can today. And then on Thursday, we'll finish that up and then I'll put you in breakout rooms and do a more complicated problem. The more complicated problem on Thursday, you have two blocks on top of each other. And if, and if they are not gonna move in, in, um, relative to each other, the frictional force is not equal to mu n yet. The frictional force is only equal to mu n when it's about to move, okay? All right. So let's take a look at the problems we're gonna um, solve. And now um, this is what I'm gonna have you guys do because once I start sharing the screen, I'm not gonna see names and I can't find my name sheet. So once you answer, then you're gonna have to call on somebody else to answer next. All right, it looks like for alphabetical order, I did Colin, I did Dave, I did Isaac by accident, Vaughn, Amani, so we're looking at the Daniels, John, Laura, Liam. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Can everybody see this first problem? Yeah, that's good. It would be really great again if you guys put your faces on the screen. All right, so important thing, we gotta read it. So let's like take a look. There's an inclined surface, there's a block on it. The inclined surface is at a 30 degree incline. The weight of the block is 500 pounds. There's an external load P that's being applied and it's 20 degrees from the top of the block. And mu S is 0.2. So the question says, determine P for the block to be in equilibrium. So you're basically determining what the P minimum is and P maximum. And right now, me mentioning P minimum and P maximum, you might be totally confused. But let's think about what's happening. So, um, Liam, if P is a very large number, what's going to happen to the block? Liam? The block's going to move. Which way? Up the incline. Right. So if I apply a large P, it's going to move up the incline. Okay, Luis, if P is very small, what's gonna happen to the block? Luis? Okay, Laura, if P is very small, what's gonna happen to the block? Oh, Luis um, answered, he said, start sliding down. Oh, thank you. Did he do it on the chat? Yes. <laughs> okay, thanks, Laura, for monitoring that. Sorry, Luis. Good, so if P is great, it's good as the block's gonna slide up. If P is little, the block's gonna slide down. So do you understand why there's a, a range of values for P? Yeah. Right? So when we use these equilibrium equations, we're looking at static equilibrium of it not moving. So Laura, what do you think we should do when we analyze this block then? Um, we probably need to determine um, 
we need to for sure get a free body diagram, but see, test mu s with the minimum power, find like the minimum power required or load. Okay, and it's, and I just used the word P, but it doesn't represent power, it represents force. <laughs> So if P is large, it goes, the block goes up. And if P is small, the block goes down. So when we draw a free body diagram, what are we going to do? We're going to do that. Yeah, two different ones for each situation. Excellent. We're going to need to analyze it two different ways. We're going to analyze it first with, well, one, one way with the block sliding up. And if the block is sliding up, which way is our frictional force going, Laura? Um, in the negative direction. Down down, right? And if we analyze it with the block sliding down, which way is the frictional force going? Up the incline. Up. Does that make sense, you guys? So when you look at friction problems, you first have to figure out which way is this thing gonna move? Because that tells you which way to put the frictional force, which direction. We know the frictional force is always parallel to the surface, but it needs to oppose the movement. So in this type of problem, the block can slide down or the block can go up. So we have to analyze it in two different ways, okay? So we have to analyze it with one free body diagram with the block going up, and then we need to analyze it again with the block going down, okay? So um, another thing that I wanna ask you is looking at the way this block is oriented, and let's see who, um, I didn't see, Edgar, Edgar. How would you arrange your axis to do the minimum amount of work? Um, I will set up to where the x-axis is along the 30 degree incline. Great. So, and I'm guessing the reason that you're doing that, that you want to put the x-axis along the incline is because the frictional force is going to be in the x, the normal is going to be in the y, and that's all we have to find the components of is P and W. Correct. If we put the X and Y axis the way we normally would, the only force that's in the X or Y would be the W, and then we have to find components for three things. So we really wanna look at this friction problem first with finding out where the hell is this thing going? And then the other is figure out how we wanna orient the axis. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the second question. I hope it, I'm hoping this is okay with you that we talk through the three problems first. Everybody, thumbs up? Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at this, the second problem. Oh, and by the way, whenever we deal with friction, the possible motion is sliding, sometimes it's called slipping, or tipping. The only thing that's happening with this block is it's either gonna slide up or slide down. But let's just take a look at number three for a minute. Have you guys ever pushed a refrigerator and it tipped over? Hopefully not. But you realize that you wanna push it low, right? Because the higher you push it, the more it might rotate. And in statics, in statics, we are trying to prevent motion and we know how to do some of the forces and the sum of the forces in the X and the Y equals zero equations, which is preventing linear motion. And we know how to do some of the moments, which is preventing rotational motion. If this guy, nice guy, how huh? you like the drawing? If he pushes the refrigerator too high, it's gonna tip at A. Does everybody think that? but maybe if he's not pushing it too high, it'll slide. So in some friction problems, you have sliding or tipping and you have to figure out which one would occur first. Question? Okay. Well, yes, Isaac. How do you account for the fact that once it starts tipping, all of a sudden the surface area on the bottom is a lot lower and so the friction- we don't, we don't worry about the surface area at all in friction problems, which is very interesting because you think that if there's more surface area, there's more friction, and it's not true. Um, so we're always looking at these as if they're just a, a plane. But how we do um, uh, account for it is that when it starts tipping, where is the normal? In the back. 
Say that again. If so, <laughs> this guy, actually, I didn't mean to talk. Let's talk about this guy problem later. All right. But I want you to know that in sta in, in um uh um in friction problems, we're also looking at um tipping as well. Okay, but let's go back to this problem. So we have this cylinder. It looks like it's a cylinder on a cylinder. It's on an inclined surface again, it's 30 degrees. And they're telling you what the, the weight is. There's a weight that's suspended here. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not, this is kind of confusing. The cylinder, let me just read the words. The cylinder is 250 pounds. So this whole cylinder weighs 250 pounds. They tell you that the cylinder has an inner, uh, a diameter here of eight inches and uh, 12 inches. Okay, so the cylinder is 250 pounds and it has an inner and an outer diameter. It's asking you to determine the weight, this W here, and the coefficient of friction between the surface and the cylinder. Okay. So uh, who else is here? Um, David Lopez Rodriguez. Yeah. So looking at this problem, what forces are present? There's static friction. There's, there's friction. Force. Okay, there's friction. What else is there in here? The normal force. The normal force, great. And the weight. The W that's given, and then the 250 pounds of the cylinder. And where should the, the weight of the cylinder be? In the middle. In the middle, great. Center. It's center, excellent. So we have a frictional force, we have a normal, we have this W, and then we have this 250 pound cylinder. So now the question is, right? One of the first things you do on a friction problem is figure out which way is this thing gonna go, right? So we have to figure out which way could it possibly go because that's gonna determine which direction it's the frictional force is gonna go. So what do you think, I think David? It's gonna, down. it's gonna slide down. And if, and if you're not sure about it, if you're not sure if it's gonna slide down or not, you could do both, you could do up or down. But you're noticing, aren't you noticing here that um, if, if it could slide down, but it might turn going up. But again, we don't know if it's a pending motion or not. The only, can everybody see that the only really impending motion that we see is that it might slide down? Let me, uh, let me say, that. say that again. How can you say that? You don't know what the weight is, the W. We don't know what the W is. So if the W is huge, right? It if the might w roll is huge, up. It might, it might, it won't slide up though. Right? What will happen? It might roll up. It'll probably roll up, right? So we could try both, okay? And it may be because I've done the problem a bunch of times that I may just know and I have this intuition that maybe is false. Okay, so the Maybe first I missed something there. It, it it says 250 pounds. Is it? Is there are there two weights? Yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm realizing the way I wrote this is confusing. I probably uh, there's the weight of the cylinder. So there's a weight that David said. There's a weight of the cylinder that's coming down from the center. So that's let's call it W C. And then there's I probably should have called it P and P. There's a weight on. suspended from here too. There's a-, a, a Oh, block. it's something else. Okay, it's something yeah. else hanging off yeah. of it. Yeah, okay. there are two weights, you guys. There's the weight of the cylinder, which is applied at the center. And then it's asking you to determine this weight of this block that's hanging on the end. Okay, so we're gonna have two different weights. When it's not so, a hollow cylinder. Say that again, please. It's not a hollow cylinder. Um, no, it's hollow. It's hollow, but the weight would still be concentrated at the center. Of right. Mass. Even if it's hollow, this the center of this cylinder is still in the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. Right. Was that Angel? Angel, was that you? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so even though it's w hollow, the weight of the cylinder is still in the center of it. So the the, the W that's hanging um, tangent to the to the inner radius that's a, a separate weight 
then the yeah, that's a is... that's a block that's hanging there. I probably should have drawn drew a block. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, sorry about that. Maybe it would be a better picture if I actually drew a block and call this WB and then call this WC. Let's solve when we solve the problem. We'll do that. Okay. Okay, so let's go up to the first one. The first one we talked about motion and we realized that it could go slide up or slide down. So we're gonna analyze it both ways. Um, number two, we talked about it possibly sliding down and we can analyze it to go, if, we, if it rotates up, we could do that too. If we're not sure, we certainly could do it. But remem remember the only time you could apply the friction equation is when you know there's a possibility of something sliding, okay? And then let's look at three. Now, in number one, there's only one body, a block. In number two, there's only one body, a cylinder. But in number three, there are two bodies. There's the person and there's a refrigerator. So the words in the problem say the weight of the refrigerator is 180 pounds. The weight of the man is 150 pounds. Um, the frictional coefficient between the refrigerator and the floor is 0.25 and between the man's shoes because he's wearing rubber soles and floor is 0.6. And you know, it's really interesting is um, you could look up what the coefficient of friction is between two different materials. In fact, I could give you some. I thought that was really interesting. Um, if it's metal to metal, it's usually 0.5. If it's wood to metal, it's 0.5. If it's wood to wood, it's 0.4. If it's leather to wood, it's 0.4. Rubber to metal is 0.5. Rubber to wood is 0.5. Rubber to the pavement is 0.7. You don't need to know those numbers. I just think it's kind of cool to know what material and then know, right? So refrigerator, notice the coefficient of friction for the refrigerator is less than the guy because the guy has rubber shoes on. The floor is the same, but refrigerators are allowed to move somewhat, right? In case we have to push them. So the frictional force is less. Okay, so let's talk about impending motion. So I have to see who else is here. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. And okay, so let me go on the M's. Joanne, yeah, there is a chat um, that Isaac sent that has a list of the alphabetical order. Uh, oh, I dug it great. up on some canvas from like 10 years ago. Oh, okay, great. So now how do I get the chat and the screen and your faces? I can email or text it to you. It's a uh, text it. You have, my you have my cell? Yeah. Oh, no, I can't. Don't text it. I'm using the camera. All right. So um, let's, let's do Marcin. So Marcin, we're looking at two bodies here. We're probably gonna have to analyze two bodies, right? So it's asking, can the man move the refrigerator by pushing? So Marcin, you're here, right? Yeah. Okay, so which way would we wanna draw, if we're looking at the refrigerator only, which way would we wanna draw the frictional force on the refrigerator? Um, to the left? Correct. Say it in a more uh, assertive way. Because the, the guy is trying to push the refrigerator to the right, right? So which way is the frictional force going on the fridge? The left. Right. Okay. So that we know. Okay. And let's, Marcin, let's figure out this guy. This guy is pushing the refrigerator. If you think about pushing a refrigerator or something heavy, it, which way will you might move? I will be moving to the right. Mm, maybe I should have you go move a refrigerator. If you're on a tile floor that's slippery and you go to push the refrigerator. Oh, if I'm not, to, if we're realistic, I won't actually get to push it. So I'll, I'll be moving left as well. Right, you're gonna, um, you're gonna move left. So, I mean, you're trying to, take steps, right? And push the refrigerator to the right. But if you're staying still with your feet on the ground and you're pushing the refrigerator, if the, uh, if the friction between your feet and the tile is not that great, you're gonna slide backwards. You're gonna go to the left. So should we think about that more? 
if you tried to push something, right? And if it was really heavy, you might slide backwards. So the refrigerator movement is to the right, but the person movement to the, is to the left. Let's talk about that because I think I'm stumping you. Anybody want to talk about that? Is that yeah, I have my doubts. Or? Say it again. Is that when the system is static? Well, it's I'm, I'm we're analyzing it for static equilibrium, but we have to put the frictional force in one draw it in one direction, which mm -hmm. means when we have to determine its direction, we have to figure out which way we're sliding. Right. So even though we're doing a statics problem and nothing is moving, I have to think about how I would be moving or it would be moving because I have to draw the frictional force in the opposite direction. If you push something that's very heavy and you can't move it, you wind up sliding backwards. Your feet are going to give out from underneath you. But once you start moving it, then you move the opposite direction. Yes, but once you're moving it, we're not we're not in the class anymore. We're in we're di in a dynamics class, right? Mm -hmm. But we can analyze it in both directions. In the end, you're going to find out because you're going to wind up getting a negative, right? You'll get a negative value for your frictional force. But it's good in these because these problems are a little more complicated. It's worth it to spend the extra time thinking about the possible direction of the motion. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I have a question. Mackenzie, yeah. Um, so if the person sliding to the left, is there friction yeah. going to the right then? Then the frictional force goes to the right, correct. Would their frictional force and the um, refrigerator's frictional force cancel out if they're like meeting each other? Or well, would they it's, that's a really good question. Um, I, on when I did, when I did this problem, I separated the fr the refrigerator and the person, and okay. in both cases, I had the refrigerator the frictional force going in an opposite direction. But what your question your your question is: Will the frictional forces cancel each other out? They won't cancel each other out because the frictional force is mu n, right? And mu is different between the man and the tile and the refrigerator and the floor. Okay. And then also N is going to be different. I think I think in this problem, the refrigerator weighs more than the guy. Yeah. Right? Okay. That makes so sense. so this, that's probably a better answer for your question. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Great. Other questions before we start solving the problems? No. Okay. I just, oh, here, my, here it is. Okay, so um, let's just, let me share the screen again. I emailed the list to you. Oh, thanks. Okay. All right, so um, let's start with the first problem. They get a little more complicated as we go on. Okay, so uh, actually before I share, to try to get through more problems, do we want to um, not do the complete setup or do we want to do the complete setup? Do we want to move ahead a little straight to the free body diagrams? I think the setup is pretty important. Um, okay, let's do it. Yep, I agree. Can we focus especially on, because um, I was looking at the homework and you asked for a range of values of P, could we go over like how to find this range of values? That seems yep. to be the newest concept. Yep, and that's gonna, be, that's gonna be in this first problem. So let's do it, okay? So could everybody see my paper? Yeah? Okay, yeah. so um, I'm gonna start up here. So given. So we always have the sketch info. And then we're given that mu s is 0 0.2 and the rest of it's in the block. And then find, they is wanna the know. Yes, I started recording before class started because I well, wanted I to get the- recording. Is it recording the year? 
um, <clears throat> your right your document camera. Yes, I totally know how to do it now. Excellent. Okay, so we want to find P, a P min and P max. Okay, so when we looked at this problem, um, we looked at the block and we were trying to figure out which way is it going to move. And we said that if P is large, it's going to go up. And if P is small, it's going to slide down. So we have to analyze it in two directions because in each way, the frictional force is going to be in a different direction. So let's look force, magnitude, direction. And what forces do we have present? We have the weight of 500 pounds. So we have that. We have a normal, but we don't know the normal, but we do know its direction. We have P, we don't know that. Um, we have the frictional force, we don't know. Is that good? We have, am I leaving any forces out? We have the weight of 500, we have, a, a, and if I were uh, writing, if I could write on my screen, I would start writing this as scrap and just drawing it on here. I have the weight, I have the normal, I have the frictional force in P. So, and then mu is given, right? Sometimes they ask you for mu, so be careful. Because if mu is not given and it's in the fine, that's another unknown. Did everybody hear that? Sometimes these problems ask you for mu. So make sure that you look back up your at your find because there's no really way for us to put our mu s in our table. But if they're asking you for mu, that's another unknown. But in this case, we have three equations. We need three unknowns. It's a 2D body. We need one body. Okay, but in terms of the frictional force, we know the direction, but we don't know if it's down or up. So we really have to analyze it two ways. So I'm gonna say slides up, slides down. So if it slides up, let's draw our free body diagram for both. And this is 30 degrees. I have a 30 question. degrees. Yeah. Does anyone know how to make, like, you know how Joanne's sharing her screen? I can only see what she's writing on in a tiny little box in the corner. Does anyone know how to make that bigger? Are you yeah, double and tap on the. I tried double tapping on that box. And the... Are you uh, on desktop or, uh, or uh, mobile? Uh, desktop. So on mine, it has a gallery view down the side, and you can you can pin Joanne's document camera, and then slide. There's a slider, and I'm not sure if everybody has the same setup. Zoom seems to only give it to half the people, uh, it, but you can slide it over so that basically Joanne's document camera becomes big, and it'll shrink the other side. I can't for some reason get into gallery view. Okay. Do you um do you, do you see three dots in my um in my screen where I'm writing? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Joanne, you want um what will solve her problem is also you can just now that we have it all set up, you can just stop sharing your screen, and that way we can pin your uh. Yeah. Oh, I can. okay. Okay, now I can pin it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Guys. Sorry. Thanks for. Oh your no, no problem. Okay, so I have two free body diagrams drawn. So on the left side, I'm talking about sliding up and on the right side, I'm doing sliding down. And um, so if it's sliding up, my frictional force is going this way. And if it's sliding down, my frictional force is going this way. Everybody good with that? Yeah. And then Edgar said, um, he's gonna make the X and Y axis like this, right? And, um, you know, since P applies, so I'm gonna do components. So for P, P equals um, P times the cosine of 20 degrees I plus the sine of 20 degree, uh, well, I should do cosine. 
cosine of 70 degrees J and it's in um, pounds. So this comes out to be cosine um, equals 0 0.9397 I plus 0 0.3420 J. Actually, I'm gonna put the P's in both spots. I'm gonna put a P I and I'm gonna put a PJ. Is it too small for you guys or could you see what I'm doing? It's okay. Yeah, it's a good size. Okay. So then I'm gonna do the check 0.9397 squared plus 0 0.3420 squared and 0.9397 squared plus 0.3420 squared equals one. And then a positive negative visual, yes, because they both should be positive. So there's P, I got the components of P. And then um, I have to do this 500 pounds too. So 500, 500 pounds, it's gonna be 500 times. It's a negative, let's see, this is 30, so this is 30. This is 30 here. So it's um, in the X is going to be sine negative sine 30. I uh, plus cosine uh, negative negative cosine 30 J and it's pounds again. And I shouldn't probably do all this number crunching. I already did it, but it's okay. So uh, 30, I think is 0.5. So it's going to come out to be 250 negative I minus it's going to be 866 times 500, um, 433J, and it's in pounds. And I'm just going to do the check. Squared plus 250 squared under the radical, 500, great. And going back, it should be a negative X and a negative Y, good. Joanne, can you bring the paper up just a bit, please? Yes. Thank you. So maybe I, uh, you know, I could have done this somewhere else, but it's going to apply to both of them because both P and F go in the P and the weight go in the same direction in both. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through my uh, alphabetical list now. Thanks. Okay. Daniel C. Daniel. Okay, we're going to analyze sliding up first, right? It's a 2D yeah. problem. How many equations do I need? Three equations. Three equations. What are those equations going to be? Uh, the equations would be some of the forces in the X direction, some of the forces in the Y direction, and I'm going to uh, we don't have a moment, so no. What's the equation that comes with friction problems? Uh, connect. The friction, friction equa equation. Uh, yeah. Okay, mu n. Just a hint, you guys. There are no dimensions in this problem. If they don't tell you the size of the block, you can't do any moment equations. If they said it was a square block, then you could do it. But Daniel, one thing you said is there are no moments. Take a look. These are not all concurrent forces, right? P is here. We don't really know if it goes through the center or not because we don't know the dimensions of the block. The friction force is not concurrent with the others. So there is, could be, there is a moment that could be created, all right? So we're gonna do the force equation. So some of the forces in the X equal, um, 0.9397P minus the friction force minus 250 equals zero. So 0 0.9397P minus the friction force. And you wanna just put it in right? Well, we'll just, should we just put it in now? Uh, yeah, let's just put it in. And we have what mu is, it's 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 times N equals 250. 
So do you guys see that this is, equa I'm calling it equation one, but it's really equation one and equation two. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I shouldn't skip. Let's not skip. Let's just say this. Um, equation two is that the frictional force is equal to 0 0.2 times N. So that's equation two. And then equation three is some of the forces in the Y. It's N plus 0 0.3420 P minus 433 equals zero. N plus 0 0.3420 P is equal to 433. Equation. Uh, could you raise up the paper? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, by doing equation one plus two plus three, we find out that P is equal to 334 pounds. Okay, Daniel H. Daniel Hall, you here? Okay, Danny. Yes. Okay. So remember, we are doing static analysis, which means when P is 334, there is no movement. It's static. But we were analyzing it for sliding up. So can you give me a conclusion? What would P have to be in order for it to slide up? Mm. We just analyzed it for static equilibrium. When right. P is 334, it is not going anywhere. Okay. But we analyzed it for moving up. So if P was what value, would it slide up? It would have to be greater? Yes. If P is greater than 334 pounds, block slides up. Got it? Everybody good? Thumbs up? Daniel, you listen to me or music? Uh, which Daniel? You. I'm listening to you. Oh, okay. I'm talking to myself while I'm doing this. Okay, you look very excited. And I didn't think I could make somebody look that excited doing a static Sorry. problem. <laughs> I'm no, at no, home and I'm kind of weird. That's great. It looked like you were dancing. Okay, so now, so no dancing in my class. Just kidding. All right, so now let's take a look at this. The only difference here, we have these three equations, right? Um, where are we, Daniel, David, David, Edgar, Elizabeth? Okay, Eric. Good morning. Hey, Eric. Okay, Eric, from analyzing sliding up and sliding down, which equations are exactly the same? I think they're all going to be the same except for equation one. Correct. So equation two and equation three are going to be the same, right? So I'm just going to write them down again. I don't, I don't need, ha I don't, I don't have P. What? Do we just flip the sign on P? Do you move your paper No, because P is the same. The only thing different is the friction force. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Look at the free body diagrams. The only thing that's so different is the frictional force. Right. So the, um, some of the forces in the Y is the same plus 0 0.3421 P is equal to 433. Move it up, yes. So the only thing different is the sum of the forces in the X equation, right? Now it's gonna be 9397P plus the frictional force minus 250 equals zero. So 0 0.9397P plus the frictional force is equal to 250. This is the only thing. I still can't see you where you're writing. Awesome, thank you. So this is equation two from the left. And this one is equation one, no, equation two 
from the left. And the only thing new is equation four, right? Wait, let's see, uh, equation, this is three. Question? Yeah. So in our table, when we're putting in um, you know, force of static friction, we, we know which direction it's going to be. We, it might be positive or negative, but we can still count it as knowing which direction because we know the angle, yes? Yeah, and I mean, if you want to be complete, you probably would do a, full, a, a, a table set up for each analysis, right? So we know it for when it goes up and we know it for when it goes down. Maybe that's better to, to do. But the point is, is that I wanted to know how many bodies I needed to analyze and how many equations I needed. So going down here now, I have equation two plus three plus four gave me P is equal to 187 pounds. Gerardo, you're here, right? Yeah. So Gerardo, are you using the chat or verbal? Can anybody see? I don't see anything Sorry, in chat. Might stepped, yeah, I might have stepped out. Hyoji, are you here? All right, Isaac, you already went. Jack, Jack, you here? Oh my God. All right, Jason. Oh, oh yeah, Jack, you're here. All oh. right, so in this case, I analyze the block sliding down. And remember, it's in static equilibrium. I got a P of 187. So when P is 187, it's static, it's not sliding. What would P have to be for it to slide? Jack? I thought he was just here. All right, Jason. For it to slide down? Yeah, because we were analyzing it for sliding down. Anything less than that. Right. So if P is less than 187 pounds, block slides down. Well, I'm pleased so by this because I take 334 and I subtract 187 and I get a difference of something in the hundred. Well, we don't want so. we don't want a difference. Think about it this way. So and Jason, I'm gonna have you do the final conclusion. I know if P is greater than 334, it slides up. If P is less than 187, the block slides down. So what is the range of values for P for this block to stay still? I would take 334 and subtract 187. Mm. Well, you can't just subtract the two numbers, right? Well, I'm interested in that because I mean, the range, sure, the range is 187 to 334. But right. So I'm wait, what, in... let me just write it. <laughs> Would you agree that if P is greater than or equal to 187, or P is less than or equal to 334, it's in static equilibrium, meaning it's not going to move? So you can't subtract it. I mean, if you want to subtract it, you would, no, because we're talking about a load being applied. It's a range. The load could be P, what I pull on it, could be anywhere between 187 and 334. Yeah, but it's just interesting. Like I could use that number to form a ratio um, with the other values, as in like the range in which it's, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing around. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to the. Anybody have questions about this? So Isaac, you had asked about how do we figure out a range? We have to analyze it from motion going in both directions. You guys are all smiling. What the hell are you talking about in the chat without me? Or is it in Discord? <laughs> what the hell are you, you guys have access doing? to the chat too. Yeah, you could definitely look at the chat. There's a bunch. <laughs> of I know, but that's why I think you guys are all in Discord or something. No, we're Between just the two no. P or whatever. 
<laughs> I'm probably not going to get your jokes anyway. All right, whatever. I don't care. We're, we're, we're engaged. Okay, good. We're engaged. All right. So does everybody understand this? Okay. So what are some key things? First, we have to figure out which way this thing is possibly moving because that controls the direction that we put the frictional force in, right? That's one. And then two, we have to analyze it from both directions if we think that's gonna be the case. Now, why are we, okay, uh-oh, I gotta go back up to the chat so I get to the names of people. Jason I Lee, I don't think I called yeah. on you. Jason. Mm -hmm. Why was I allowed to use this friction equation of F is equal to mu n? When can because, I use that equation? Um, <clears throat> I think you can use it anytime you want, right? Because they are friction present in this question. You could only use it when you're calculating impending motion. It's about okay. to move. Okay. Right? So if your little sister stacked blocks on top of each other and tied a rope to the bottom block and slide it across your wood floor and none of the blocks slid over each other, the only one that was sliding was the bottom block on the floor, you could only put the frictional equate the friction equation on the bottom block with the floor. If the other blocks were staying still on top of the other blocks, the frictional equation does not work. It only works when there's impending motion, okay? And then yeah. the kinetic friction equation only works when there's continuous motion. Jason, question? No question. Okay. All right, so let's look at the second problem. Can I see your table for that last one one more time? Yeah. Cool. All set, thanks. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the second problem and I'm gonna pull it up again, share the screen. And then we'll down. So oh, there are, and maybe I should redraw it. Let me just redraw it. Let me, well, let me draw it uh, first. What time are we starting at 1030? Yeah, what time are we looking at? Oh, man. All right, give me a little time. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, so the problem, it says the weight of the cylinder is 250. So we know the weight of the cylinder is in the center. So let's just call it WC is 250 pounds. Hopefully this is clearer now. The weight of the cylinder is 250. There's a block here that has a weight and let's call it block, weight of the block. And that's an unknown. So given is the weight of the cylinder is 250 pounds. And the find is they want to know what mu s is and they want to know what wb is. And it said, determine the weight w, C, oh, we're going to call it wb, and the coefficient of friction between the surface and the cylinder. Between surface and cylinder.
Okay, so I think uh, Jordan, weight, I think the block weight is hanging from the inner radius. Is that right? Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Jordan, and um, and notice that there was a surface here too, right? So, Jordan, what other forces are in here be be besides these two weights? With the surface, there would have to be a normal force and a frictional force. Great. So we got to put a normal, and it's thirty degrees, so it's thirty degrees from the vertical and a friction force. So now we have to decide, right? Looking at this problem, there's a weight that's pulling it this way, but there's this inclined surface. So which way? The frictional force would be going kind of up. like to Yes, because it's probably gonna go down, slide down. So we have the frictional force going up, okay? So we could write down Assumption. Rolls or slide? Um, we're doing sliding right now, okay. but we could look at it both ways. Okay, we'll just try them out. It'll be uh, so. My assumption is that it's going to slide down, which means my frictional force is going up to the right. So we do my table force, magnitude, direction. And we, we have, have the norm three things now. Say that again? There are three possibilities. Could be. Let's see how it goes. So we have a normal, we have the WB, we have the WC, and we have the frictional force. So the normal, we don't know. The WB is not given, we don't know. The WC, we know it's 250 pounds and the frictional force we don't know. But remember what I said, you know, we're talking about a table that has forces and moments in it. Always take a quick look up at the find because you also need to find the frictional force is unknown. Right? So, uh, Luis, are you back? No, okay, Maria. No, Mackenzie went, Marcin. Maria. So how many unknowns do I have? Four. One, two, three, four unknowns. How many equations do I need? Four. Right, 2D body, how many bodies? Uh, one, because we can use the friction equation. Yep. And, we and I actually have the free body diagram drawn already, right? I kind of yeah. drew it already. Uh -huh. So Maria, how would you like to orient the axes? I would orient it, um, I guess up the, I don't know, there's yeah. two forces going down and then there's the normal force and the friction force. So kind of either way would work, I guess. Right, because we would have to break these two into components or we have to break these two components. So you know what usually I decide it for me is what, this is a known thing uh -huh. and it's kind of nice of working with known components. So I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. So if we do components, for WB, where am I? Can you see everything? Yeah. So WB times negative sine of 30 minus cosine of 30 pounds. So that's negative 0 0.5 WBI minus, is that right? 30 sine is a half, yeah. 
and then 0 0.866 times WB pounds, 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared plus 0.866 squared equals one, and that's correct. Positive, negative, visual. They're going in the negative X and negative Y, yeah, okay. And then the other one is the WC, which is 250. Couldn't you say like, because um, it's 30 degrees, so wouldn't it be like cosine of 120? Yeah, I could have used that. Remember when we, at some point in the semester, we said, oh, okay, well, we could actually, you, this is not theta x or theta y. You're correct, Maria. You'd have to use 120, but then you would have a positive here. Okay. Right. Uh, this is the same thing, isn't it? They're both 30 degrees. Yeah. Negative sine 30i minus cosine 30j. Negative 125i minus... 216.5 J pounds, 125 squared plus 216.5 squared. Yep, 250 plus or minus visual. Yep, it's negative. Okay, so Maria, Matthew. Okay, is there an equation that we could use that's the most efficient that only has one unknown in it? Let's see. Um, no. Um, would it be some, some of the four, no. I was thinking some forces in the Y, but we have an unknown yeah. weight going down. Yeah, so some of the forces in the Y would have two unknowns. Some of the forces in the X would be two unknowns. Yeah, because we have an unknown moment? weight. Yeah, how about a sum of a moment? Yes, um, yeah. but we'd have to put it on the edge of the circle. Yeah, let's see. Because we we'd have to try to cancel we, an we, unknown. Yeah, we have all the... This one, no, we don't. Yeah, if we put it on the edge of the big circle, this doesn't necessarily, we don't have that dimension. The only for sure distances are from the center. We'd have to break this into other components. So yeah, we have three equations and they all have more, uh, four equations, they all have two unknowns in it. So let's just crank them out. So some of the forces in the X equal F of F minus, 0 0.5 WB minus 125. So I have the friction equation, friction force. I have the X component of WB and WC. And it turns out to be FF minus 0 0.5 WB equals 125. So that's equation one. Can everybody see my page? Okay, sum of forces in the Y equal uh, N minus 0 0.866 WB minus 216.5 equals zero. The normal minus oh, 0 0.866 WB equals 216.5. That's equation two. What did you say the third equation should be, Matthew? We have the sum of the forces in the X, the so sum of the forces in the Y. Uh, we are looking at moments. Right. Um, but we also have the friction equation. And we have the friction equation. So let's do moments about the center because then we know what the distances are from the center. So mm -hmm. what force is, if I did some of the moments about the center, Matthew, what would it be? Uh, some of the forces, uh, some of the moments around the center would be uh, WB and F. Right, so it would be 
uh, the frictional force times 12, right? Yeah. Positive or negative? Uh, that would be positive. Positive. And then WB times? Uh, that'd be eight. times eight inches. Negative or positive? That would be negative. Negative equals zero. So then we have 12 frictional force minus eight WB equals zero. That's equation three. And then equation four, you said is a frictional force. So it's the frictional force times mu, which is unknown, times the normal. So here's my equation four. And again, we've seen a problem like this before where a coefficient of an unknown variable is also unknown and you really can't do matrices. So you're gonna to have to do algebra. And when you plug it all in, you wind up getting P is equal to one. Wait, no, no, no. Looking at the wrong problem. There's no P. <laughs> so what am I solving for? WB. I get um, WB turns out to be 750 pounds. And mu S turns out to be 0 0.577 or just 0.58. Can you all see what I have written down? So we'll hang on a second. W turns out to be 750 and... Okay, I think we should stop here and then let's just so that you... Um, you now have seen a, pro, a, a first problem where you're looking analyzing up and analyzing down. And now you're looking at another problem where we are throwing in the moment equations and we have a value, but we still have the question of, well, can this roll up or not? So let's talk about that on Thursday. And then we could do the last two problems, okay? Or, or should we talk about it now and put off the quiz a little? If you put off the quiz, you'll have to put it off for quite a while because most of us have, or a lot of us have physics okay. right after this. Okay, so let's not, let's not put it off, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go to the quiz now. So let me share the screen. Um, Okay, so here's the friction module and here's the overview that we'll go over on Thursday. Here are the problems we're doing in class. I'll post the things. Here's the homework and here's the quiz. So let me open up the quiz. Hang on a second, I gotta move all this stuff. I have to stop sharing and get it because it's a PDF. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Frame quiz, sorry, it's a little sloppy. Number one, draw all forces and reactions at supports on the five free body diagram below. So you're given the first frame. And then what I want you to do is draw all the forces, all the reactions at the supports on all these five free body diagrams, okay? So basically I take took it away from its main A and F supports and then I separated all the members, including the pulley. That's number one. Number two, determine the reaction at point C only. That's all I want you to do is find C. With the least amount of equations, all right? And don't worry so much about how many equations, but try to do with the least amount of equations. And you have to tell me where the equations are coming from. So you're solving for the reactions at C, 
you have all the free body diagrams drawn. So call them like free body diagram one, free body diagram two. When you write out the equations, make sure it's clear that I know which free body diagram each equation is from. Did everybody hear me? You have to specify which free body diagram the equations came from. Okay. Should I keep this up here? You might have to print it out. You know, you might want to print it out so you don't have to draw it. <laughs>